If a Pensacolian of today could wake up one morning and find themselves in the year 1892, they certainly wouldn't recognize their fair city. They would be especially shocked when they saw the area south of Zaragoza Street, which was a world of its own. For one thing, the city leaders of the day certainly did not approve, but definitely allowed, such vices as prostitution, gambling, and saloons all of which increased the town's coffers. In fact, to properly control this type of questionable behaviour, the city government issued only a small number of permits for the astronomical price of $2,500. This amount in 2024 would be $85,000. But the respectable citizens as a whole condoned this behaviour as long as it was restricted to a designated part of town. Thus, prostitutes had their own section to practice their trade, and the saloons and gambling establishments had theirs. Now, as it just so happened, on Monday morning at 11 a.m. of August 29, 1892, William Willie Jolly was playing a game of dominoes with his friend Edward Shepard and Charles Smith at Dan Heiser's saloon. Located at 401, South Palafax Street on the southwest corner of Zaragoza and South Palafax, it was one of the more popular and well-attended bars in town. Smith was one of the bartenders at Dan Heiser's, but he was taking a break from his chores at the time. It was then that a 26-year-old machinist by the name of Leonidas Radcliffe Burgoyne Jr. walked into the bar and saw the three men at play. Without hesitating, he invited himself to join the game and sat down at the table. Leon was a stranger to Willie and Charlie, but was known to Shepard, so no one objected to a fourth player. Shepard was a young clerk who boarded several blocks away at 320 West Gregory Street and had chosen to join his friends for lunch. Leon Jr. was born in 1867, the son of Leon Ida Sr., and Elzada Olivia Lawrence of Fairhope, Alabama. His father had been an engineer in the U.S. Navy during the Civil War, and when the war ended, his ship was stationed at the Navy Yard in Pesacola. There, he met and married Elzada prior to moving to Delaware, after his discharge. The family would return to the Navy Yard in Pesacola in 1880, and two years later moved into the city limits. Leon Jr. would follow in his father's footsteps and became a lifetime engineer for one of the local timber companies. In the meantime, more drinks arrived as Willie lost the first game and Shepard the second. Soon enough, Leon lost the third. Leon appeared to take the loss in stride. Afterwards, Willie bowed out of the game as did Leon, but returned later and found Shepard still at the table. An hour later, Leon returned as well and went to the bar and ordered a beer from Smith, who had returned to serving drinks. Smith served him a glass of which he drank. Afterwards, he threw 50 cents onto the bar and received 45 cents in return from Smith. He then asked Smith, is that all I owe you? Smith replied, no, you still owe me 15 cents from the game. Leon grabbed the glass and attempted to hit Smith with it. However, Smith came from behind the bar and took the glass away from him and told him, don't try such breaks as that with me. He also told him to quieten down or leave and stood firm on his request. Thinking it was over, he returned to the bar. But Leon apparently couldn't take the loss of face and pulled a pistol from his pocket and shot Smith in the abdomen. He attempted to shoot him again, but the young bartender staggered and fell, but recovered enough to run out of the back and straight to the police station about 75 yards away on the southwest corner of Zaragoza and Jefferson Street. Upon arrival, he was said to be more dead than alive. After the shots, Willie ran out the back door while Leon exited the front with the smoking pistol still in his hand. No sooner had he stepped out than he was arrested by Officer John H. 
Hutchins. Searched at the police station, they found an open-bladed knife in his pocket. Leon's wife, Nancy Catherine, was notified at her home at East Garden and 11th Avenue that her husband had been arrested, but due to the severity of the charges, he was not going to be released. While Leon's arrest was in progress, the victim was being examined by Dr. Frank Gale Renshaw at the police station. Perhaps due to the severity of his wound, he was placed on a litter and carried to his home at 315 South Florida Blanca. Oddly, only several blocks away at 323 West Zaragoza was the Pesacola Infirmary, which was owned by Dr. Renshaw and Anderson. Why he was not transported there is unknown. After being placed in his bed, he was given chloroform to ease his severe pain. Also, the Justice of the Peace, Justice James Nicholas Moreno, was brought in to witness his deposition as to the circumstances of the shooting. When the deposition was completed, he was examined more thoroughly by Renshaw and Dr. Warren Edward Anderson, two of the only three surgeons in town. They found that the 32 caliber bullet had penetrated the liver and lodged inside. The doctors decided to perform a surgery called a laparotomy on Smith, which was the most delicate operation of the day. This was where a 6 to 12 inch incision was made through the abdominal wall, which gave the surgeon more room to see what they were doing and what had to be done. They finished up the procedure at 4 pm, but it was no use. The young man died the next day on August 30, 1892, at 11.45 a.m. attended by his wife Sally and son Ernest and his comrades from the Knights of the Pythias. His remains were buried in St. John's Cemetery. Smith had relocated to Pesacola in December 1888 from Lake City, Florida along with his wife and his son Ernest. He was known as a quiet, peaceful man and had been hired as a bartender by the owners of the bar, John Dunn and the Dan Heiser brothers, David and Morris. But the young man's murder had raised the ire of many of the citizens who were tired of the violence. On August 31st, an editorial piece was printed in the Pesacola newspaper, vehemently stating that no less than eight murders have occurred in Pesacola of which none of the culprits had paid the consequences for such a crime. Lawbreakers amid our town's deadly violence go unpunished and unmolested. Now number nine would be tried for the same offence. During the trial of January 6, 1893, all witnesses, including co-owner of the bar David Danheiser, testified that Smith was unarmed and never made any move to arm himself before being fatally shot. After closing arguments, the jury was instructed and adjourned to the jury room for deliberation. After three and a half hours, they returned at 10.20 a.m. and presented a verdict of not guilty. The Pesacola newspaper's prophesy had come true once again, and now the tally was now nine. But what of the Dan Heiser brothers? Born in Germany, Morris and David were the sons of Marcus Dan Heiser and Regina Rummel Goldschmidt. David arrived in New York Harbor on November 7, 1885 from Bremen and proceeded to Pesacola. Whereas Morris would follow him in 1886. When they first appeared in Pesacola, they applied for a license to sell liquor on May 29, 1886. By 1890, he and his brother David were well established with a saloon at 401 South Palafax Street. Morris would marry on January 22, 1888 to Miss Pauline Danheiser, daughter of Marx Danheiser and Jeanette Lib. Marx had immigrated to Pesacola in 1869 and was invested in the grocery and clothing business. 
Morris and Pauline would remain in Pesacola until 1930. Sometime after that, Morris would pass away at the age of 73 on June 15, 1933 in Washington, D.C., and was buried there in the Washington Hebrew Cemetery. On March 29, 1936, Pauline would join her beloved. As for his brother, David Dan Heiser, he was born in 1864 and would marry in Pesacola to Estelle Forchheimer on May 11, 1892. She was the daughter of Gerson Forchheimer and Bertha Golds Tucker. However, the year 1908 brought tragedy to the Dan Heiser family that changed their fortunes entirely in Pesacola. On April 19, David was feeling poorly when he went into the bathroom. Once inside, he turned on the gas lamp but failed to light it. Before he knew it, he collapsed and succumbed shortly afterwards from asphyxia. David was buried at the age of 43 years old in the Temple Bethel Cemetery. He was joined there by Estelle in 1960. His son, Bertram Vivian, would graduate from dental school in 1912 and spent the next 68 years serving his hometown of Pesacola. He would pass away in 1983 and was buried next to his parents. David's remaining son, Alvin David would retire as an Army Lieutenant Colonel in the Dental Corps, serving in both World War I and World War II. He was buried in Citronelle, Alabama, in 1965. As for his daughter Ruth, she was born in 1900 and would marry Abram Raymond Hayesfield from Philadelphia in 1929. He was a local physician in Pesacola, and both were buried in Bayview Cemetery upon their passing. Rena Danheiser, daughter of Morris and Pauline Danheiser, was born in 1893 in Pesacola and married Barnum Anthony Leverton in 1918 in her hometown. He was employed at the Naval Air Station at the time, although they would eventually relocate to Washington, D.C. There, her husband would operate a clothing store. The photo here is Rena attending the Temple Jewish School in 1901. They both are buried in the Washington Hebrew Cemetery in Washington, D.C. The old Dan Heiser Bar, as it appears today at 401 South Palafax Street. The old building is now Don Allen's apparel store. The gas lights on the balcony are original to the building when it was first built and are still operational. 